Good morning and welcome to our service of the 1st of August uh, 2021. And first I'd like to start is for some of our announcements. And so hopefully uh, you may have all received your, your bulletin either through email or uh, our elders have passed it on to you. So I encourage you to read and see especially all the activities that were happening uh, this week. Uh, but the two things I really want to mention is there was two attachments that were included in the bulletin. The first attachment was our prayer points for August. And so our elders and our pastoral carers we met and these are the prayer points where people have given us consent to share. So in your own quiet time, that's an opportunity where you can pray for those people on, on the list. Or if you do, with when the COVID's up, uplifted, that um, during the activities, you could also pray as part of those prayer points as well. But one thing I do want to mention is that there are quite a few other things that our elders and our pastoral carers are praying for, which are confidential, but we are still praying for all those people not on the list as well. So I just want to mention our prayer points. The second thing I just want to mention is today Jesus is talking about being the bread of life. And so this week I've included a seven day devotion on the bread and wine that Jesus has declared and when we think of Holy Communion. And so I encourage you to each day is look at the Bible reading. There are instructions included. And the idea is to is read the Bible reading, reflect on the questions that are asked, give yourself about five minutes in quiet time to reflect on the, the questions, and then finish by taking your own personal communion in taking the, the bread and wine. But it's really a time for you to think about how much to crave our Jesus, the bread of life. So those are two things I just want to mention. And now sit back and get prepared for our service today. God has gathered us to this place where we hear those stories which show us what the kingdom of God is like. God summons us to this place where we can learn how to serve our God without reservation or hesitation. God will send us from this place to tell others of God's hopes and dreams so they too can choose to follow God. So here we are to worship, to give ourselves to God and to worship his wonderful name. together 
lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Father, we come here this day to give you our praise and adoration, our love and our lives. We acknowledge that you created this beautiful world and we are wonderfully made. There is none like you, Lord. There is none like you. Take our worship, our prayers, our singing as a sign of our gratitude for all that you have done. Come Holy Spirit and move in this place and in our hearts. We give you praise, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us lift our voices in praise with the words, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the King of Kings. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, we lift up your name. Lord, we lift up your name. With hearts full of praise. With the hearts full of praise. We exalt the Lord, my God. Hosanna in the highest. Glory, glory, glory to the King of kings. Glory, glory, glory to the King of kings. Lord, we lift up your name. Lord, we lift up your name. While the people of God wandered in the desert, God provided manna from heaven, water from a rock, and a law to guide their way and to shape their life together. God has fed us too and stayed with us every moment of our journey so that we are never alone. We are here today to be fed, to gather strength in the spirit of God so we can reach out in ministry to the world. We have gathered our gifts together and we now offer them to God in gratitude and praise. Let us pray. Lord, help us to feel thankful for everything that you've given us. We worship and praise you with our gifts. Our prayer this morning is that through us, the world will see Christ's light and come to know your goodness. Please take our gifts and use them to strengthen the church's ministry here at home and in the world. Amen. Our Bible reading today comes from John chapter 6, verses 22 to 35, from the King James Version. The Bread from Heaven. On the following day, when the people who were standing on the other side of the sea saw that there was no other boat there, except that one which his disciples had entered, and that Jesus had not entered the boat with his disciples, but his disciples had gone away alone, however. Other boats came from Tiberias near the place where they ate bread after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into boats and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them and said, Most assuredly, I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves and were filled. Do not labor for the food which perishes, but for the food which endures to everlasting life, which the Son of Man will give you, because God the Father has set his seal on him. Then they said to him, What shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, this is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he sent. Therefore they said to him, 
What sign will you perform then, that we may see it and believe you? What work will you do? Our fathers ate the manna in the desert. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, Moses did not give you the bread from heaven, but my Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Then they said to him, Lord, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This week, when I was reflecting on this reading about the bread of life, somehow my stomach, as normal, started to crave and yearn for the old Sizzler's cheese toast. Now that all the Sizzler restaurants are closed, how many of us miss that Sizzler service where you would place your order, then you'd be ushered to your seat, and then within about five minutes, out came the cheese toast. Now, some of us may have found this cheese toast quite salty, but I found it quite Moorish. And I wanted, and I yearned, and I craved for, for more cheese toast before I received my main meal, which was usually the fisherman's platter. What do we yearn or crave in our lives? Last week, my colleague, Pastor Dave, touched on the opening passages of John 6, where Jesus demonstrates signs of his messiahship through the feeding of the 5,000 and then walking on water and settling the storm. Yes, these are true stories of miracles, but they also depict what Dave said last week about Jesus. I am mighty. Now that I've introduced the mighty Jesus with the cheese toast, let us reflect on today's narrative about the bread of heaven. Now before Jesus fed the 5,000 last week, in the little reading, and plus all the women and the children, Jesus did two things. The first thing that Jesus did was he was healing the people who already gathered before him. The second thing that happened was when a large crowd gathered to witness the healing, Jesus said to his disciples, we need to feed these people. Now, the people, they could have gone and seen their physician for treatment or they could have communed together at the local markets. But no, for some reason, they wanted, they yearned, they craved for Jesus. Both times, Jesus responded in love. Have you ever thought about or even pictured how Jesus would heal people? Sometimes the directness within the gospel writers gives you that picture that Jesus healed people almost as if they were on like a conveyor belt. You know, like be healed. Okay, there you go. Where you go. Or, oh, you're no longer lame. There you go. Run away. Off you go. That's right. Or going to the blind and saying, oh, you are now healed. Yes, it's pleased to see me and it's pleased to see you and it's good to see you on your way. I picture a Jesus who spends 
time with each and every individual. A Jesus who's smiling, listening, relieving, and also hugging. Is this what the approaching crowd were seeking? I also picture a Jesus who late in the afternoon, who is now hungry and who is craving for some cheese leavened bread. And then he also realises, hey, if I'm hungry, this crowd must be hungry too. This is a man. It's a man who heals, who listens, who relieves, who hugs, and also sustains, which are all signs of love. The agape love, the divine love of God. Coming to today's reading, a day had passed, and the crowd that witnessed and received a taste of this cheese toast, I mean, the divine love, they wanted more. They yearned for more. They craved for more of Jesus. When they could not find him where he was praying, they went the extra mile and crossed a sea with a reputation for windy and turbulent weather to find Jesus. In this life journey, they discovered Jesus again and they asked, what are you doing here? Jesus knew that they were no longer looking for signs. They wanted they yearned, they craved for what they witnessed and received the day before. They received a portion and now they wanted more. Jesus says, I am mightier than Sizzler's cheese toast. I'm the bread of life. Come to me and you will never be hunger. Believe in me and you will never thirst. The crowd said, we used to get the life of God from Moses. I used to get the best cheese toast from Sizzler's. But where is the true source? Now, I could spend my life going from restaurant to restaurant to restaurant to find that sizzler cheese toast that I craved. Or I could simply go to the source, which is a simple recipe that happens to be on the internet. Now, I haven't done this yet, but if I try to recreate that cheese toast my way, will it be the same? Somehow I doubt it. The manna which the crowd's ancestors received was not from Moses. It was from the source, the triune God. If we recall this story, the Israelites were grumbling to Moses because they were hungry. Physically hungry because they missed their meals of potted meat and bread. But they were also spiritually dying. For they felt lost and abandoned by their God. Where is this loving God who just saved us from the oppression of Egypt? God was there, listening, 
relieving, sustaining, and healing. God demonstrated agape love to his people and he fed them. So I wish to go back to the question I asked earlier. What do we yearn or crave in our lives? This week, Pastor Dave and I, we embarked on a minister street retreat with all these other uh, Uniting Church ministers. And we too were asked, what do we crave or what do we desire? And what was evident to all of us there was this concluding statement. We all agreed to the statement that was made. Behind every desire is a desire and longing for God. Behind every desire is a desire and longing from God. The crowd desired, wanted, yearned, craved the mighty man who loves. And I believe Jesus desired, wanted, yearned and craved the crowd to find him so that he could love through his actions and through his teachings. Think about the question in our context today. We may desire, yearn or crave wealth. We may crave success. May we may even want a big family. Or we may even want to have an attractive and sensual partner because so that we can be loved. What is a source of the love we desire? It's from our triune God. A couple weeks ago, in our Colossian series, I made this statement that we continuously need Jesus. We need to feed on Jesus. And I also made the statement, we need to pig out on Jesus. The mighty... The I am is telling us to desire, yearn and crave for the bread of life. His love. But also believe. So that your void inside, the empty heart shall be consumed and filled with his love and you no longer thirst. Today, we are going to partake in the divine meal of the Eucharist, which is also what we call Holy Communion, where Jesus says, remember me. Remember that if you desire and crave for God's love, come to me. For God desires and craves to love you. As I mentioned in the announcements, I have also provided you with a challenge. And that's the seven days of bread and wine. Where you, in the coming week, 
You can read a daily passage about God's love. There are questions for you to reflect on. And then there's a time for about five to ten minutes where you just sit in silence and you just meditate and you desire, you yearn or you crave for God's love. After each day with your time of silence, I'd like to encourage you to close by eating your own bread and drinking your own wine or even your own juice or water. Spend time communing to God. Yearn, crave God, because God yearn and craves for you. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus said, I am mighty. I am mightier than any sizzler's cheese toast. Amen. We all start on the outside, the outside looking in. This is where grace begins. We were hungry, we were thirsty, with nothing left to give, all the shape that we were in. But just when all hope seemed lost, love opened the door for us. He said, come to the table, come join the sinners. Who have been redeemed Take your place Beside the Savior Sit down and be set free Come to the table To the thief and to the doubt To the hero and to the gal To the prisoner and the soldier to the young and to the old, all who younger and all who thirst, and all the last and all the first, and all the paupers and the princes, all who fail and been forgiven, all who dream and all who suffer, and all who loved and lost another, all the chained and all the free, and all who follow and all who lead, and anyone who's been let down. All the lost you have been found All have been labelled right or wrong To everyone that hears this song Come to the table Come and join the sinners Who have been redeemed Take your place beside the Savior to the table Now we come to the sacrament of Holy Communion and you as per the song you are invited to participate but you can choose to abstain from this part of the service if you wish. We are here to give thanks for this gift of reconciliation which Christ initiates. However, in no way should you feel pressured to partake in this Christian ceremony. And we, the church, as an expression of our love, fully respect your decision. 
feel free to skip this section if you wish. Or alternatively, we would be happy if you just watch and observe what this illustration of Trinity means for the church and for all humanity. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for Jesus Christ, your chosen in whom you are well pleased, whom you anointed him with the Holy Spirit and raised from the dead, making the earth shudder with the birth pains of new life, and raise in him all who have died with him in the waters of baptism. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving and fooling ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just, and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let's now come to this time of silence as we express the prayers that are in on our hearts. Here, the divine words of the prophet Isaiah, where believers are made or remembered as being white as snow. Come now, let us argue it out, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be like snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. This is the good news. Christ Jesus came into the world to save us sinners. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right to give you our thanks and praise, O God. For you have sent us bread from heaven and to give life to the whole world. You are above all and through all and in all. And by your word all things were created. You fed your people with manna from heaven. And even when they defiled you, if they turned from their callous ways, you fed them again with your wisdom and your truth. In your Son, Jesus Christ, you have offered yourself to us as the bread of life, that we might be nourished and built up as the one body in the bond of peace. Though he was murdered by those he fought to save, you raised him from the depths of the earth to fill the whole universe with his gifts and baptise all things into one body, held together by one spirit, under one Lord. Therefore, with our hearts lifted high, we offer you thanks and praise at all times through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Pour out the Holy Spirit on us.
And also these gifts of bread and wine, that we may be for us the body and blood of Christ. Make us one with him, one with each other, and one in the mystery in the world, until at last we feast with him in the kingdom. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, in your holy church, all honour and glory are yours. Father Almighty, now and forever. Amen. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to this supper. The bread we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup we take is a sharing in the blood of Christ. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Receive this holy sacrament of the body and the blood of Christ and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Let's just spend a bit of time before we eat the bread and reflect on the God who yearns and craves for us. Our bread of life. body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. If you believe in me, you will never thirst. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Let us close this supper with this prayer. Please join me in the following. God, our Father, you have sought us so patiently and loved us so generously. We thank you for this supper shared in the spirit with Jesus, your Son. The bread of life, who not only makes us new and strong, but brings us eternal life. We praise you for giving us all good gifts in him and pledge ourselves to serve you 
even as in Christ you have served us. Amen. So let us take a moment now to pray for others. Heavenly Father, we bring to you our requests and concern for people and situations around us. We of course think of those affected by COVID, whether that be sickness, separation from loved ones, financial stress or uncertainty. Help those in power to make good decisions that benefit our well-being and with the medical profession as they strive to keep the virus at bay. Lord, you have the future in your hands, so help us to rely on you in this time. We pray for those who are feeling tired, anxious, lonely or afraid. Please send, send them a ray of hope to let them know you are right there beside them. We thank you that we live in a peaceful country, but we pray for those who live in fear of war and unrest. Be there in their turmoil and offer them your peace. We pray a blessing on people who are feeling sick and people grieving the loss of someone special. Place your loving arms around them at this time. We pray for ourselves, Lord, that we will use our God-given gifts to serve you in the coming week. We may have gifts of healing, listening, consoling, feeding, kindness, gentleness. May they all be used for your glory. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And the benediction as we leave this time of worship. Gracious God, as now we part, grant that we may walk in your presence, your love in our hearts, your truth in our minds, your strength in our wills, until the end of our journey. We know the joy of our homecoming and the welcome of your embrace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our final song today, Guide Me, O Thou Great Jehovah. Oh